Our next application of the derivative is going to be a summary of, our, of uh, all of our graphical methods, everything we've learned so far in, in this class, in Algebra 2 and, and before. We're going to take a look at uh, in, in domain and in the range. Remember that what we've been doing is we've been using the derivative to describe graphs. So we've been talking about increasing, decreasing, extrema. We've been talking about points of inflection. We've been talking about concavity. And before our graphing calculator, calculus was used to create a very good picture of functions that were difficult to understand so that in our, our, our next unit, our next topic, our next semester, when we talk about integration, you can get a good picture to work with. Because a picture is just, picture is money, as I like to say. So um, we want to take a look at our domain and range, topics that we've been taking a look at for a while, uh, the continuity of a function, okay, the x and y intercepts, okay, uh, any symmetry, if there's symmetry, does apply. Uh, any of our critical numbers and then describe which one of them are going to be um, where the graph is increasing and decreasing and then also use those uh, basic increasing and decreasing to find the extrema of the function uh, and then the inf inflection points and any change in concavity and describing concavity and then any asymptotes of f and then we want to sketch the graph. There's really not any new topics here. It's not like I'm going to do anything um, in my example in just a minute that we haven't seen before somewhere in the class, but we're just trying to bring it all together so you can get a good picture, um, even if you didn't have your graphing calculator to refer to. So let's consider 2x squared over 9 minus x squared, and we want to discuss this graph, and we want to um, go ahead and graph it at the end. So let's start out with our domain. Um, remember with our domain, our denominator can't be zero, and we can't have anything underneath the square root, but we don't have any square roots or any even roots, so we're not worried about that. So it's just denominator. Our denominator would be zero, where x is going to be positive three or negative three. So our domain is going to be from negative infinity over to negative three, union with negative three over to three, union with three to infinity. Remember that those three and negative three are not included because they're going to end up being vertical asymptotes down the road. Um, in terms of our range, notice that the function, we have the 2x squared on the numerator, that can never be negative. And so the positive or negative of this graph, the positive or negative of f of x is going to be determined completely by 9 minus x squared. So on this interval between negative infinity and negative 3, on that interval, this graph is going to be negative, or the whole thing is going to be in a negative, negative spot. Between <coughs> between negative 3 and, and, and 0, uh, the, the numerator is going to be 0 um, at 0, so we've got to take a look at that for in just a minute. But between negative 3 and 0, <coughs> the, the graph is going to be positive. Between 0 and 3, the graph is going to be positive still. And then beyond 3, it's going to be negative again because of this denominator. Um, this is going to help us uh, uh, with, our, with our range. It's down below the x-axis um, on the outsides, and it's in between, in between negative 3 and 3. It's, it's going to be um, positive, but it's going to be 0 right at 0. Um, and that's a point we'll go ahead and, and put in our graph. And then we can also take a look at having a vertical, I mean, excuse me, a horizontal asymptote at negative 2. Remember the powers of the leading coefficients because the powers are equal. So you can come up with a range of negative infinity over to negative 2, and then union with, it has a little gap in it between 0 and infinity. Because remember that negative 2 is what's going to approach on the outsides, and then this, this middle part right here just comes down to 0 and touches it. Um, in terms of the x and y intercepts, The x and y intercepts. If I were to plug in zero for for um, if I were to um, plug in zero for x, I'm going to get zero in the in the numerator. This point, the, the x and y intercepts, goes through the origin at zero zero. In terms of symmetry, um, f of negative x is equal to f of x because of both of the x quantities are squared, so therefore it's even. Remember that means that it's reflected across the y-axis. We have critical numbers where the derivative is going to be 0. Uh, the derivative is going to be 0 at x equals 0. Remember we also have a critical number 
um, where the derivative is not defined, and the derivative is not defined at plus, plus or minus 3, but those are not part of our original domain, so those are not critical numbers. Um, the function is increasing. If we were to, um, sorry, let me just kind of go back here for a second. Um, to find where the function is increasing and decreasing and all that stuff, we have to take a look at the derivative. To find the derivative of this, um, you have to use your quotient rule. So what I got for my derivative is f prime. Let me just put it up here so I can refer to it. f prime of x, after I simplified it, was 36x over 9 minus x squared squared. And that's why my critical number are at 0. I kind of skipped over that. I'm very sorry about that. But if you set this derivative equal to 0, uh, obviously it's going to be 0 at 0. Um, <coughs> the function, uh, therefore, the derivative is going, again, um, the, in this particular case, the denominator can never be negative. So therefore, the positive or negative of the derivative are based on the numerator only. That's it. So um, the function is going to be increasing. It's, it, the derivative is going to be positive when, when x is positive. So the derivative is increasing, or, or the function is increasing, from 0 over to 3 and then 3 to infinity. We don't include the 3. We don't include the 3 because uh, it's not part of our original domain. The function is decreasing when x is negative, so negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 0. Um, since uh, right here at, uh, at 0, that's our critical number, um, f of 0 equals 0, the graph is going from decreasing to increasing, so that means that x equals 0, or the point f of 0 equals 0, is a min. It's a local min. Okay. Um, to talk about concavity in the second derivative, we've got to find the second derivative. Again, using quotient rule and you know some algebra and simplifying and stuff like that. What I got for this is 108 x squared plus 3 over 9 minus x squared cubed. And um, in this particular part of it, what, what ends up happening is that uh, if you have a problem with this algebra, I have a problem for the derivative, please ask me in class. But we get some simplifying all that stuff. Um, and, and so then we have a possible point of inflection where this denominator is going to be um, Excuse me, my, my bad. Um, we have a possible point of inflection where the, der the second derivative would be possibly equal to 0 or undefined. It can never be 0 because the numerator is not solvable. And it can never be, um, it can't be negative, and it's not undefined at 3 and negative 3 because that's not part of our original domain. Um, so then we just need to talk about concavity. There's no points of inflection because it can't be 0. So then we just have to take a look at um, concavity of the graph. Um, and we want to take a look at, go back to our original domain on each of the intervals between negative infinity to negative 3, negative 3 to 3, and 3 to infinity. Um, and take some test values. Notice that the numerator can never be 0. The numerator can never be 0, can never be negative, sorry. The denominator, um, it, that's going to determine, because it's cubed this time, that's going to determine the, the, the concavity of the graph. So between, on this interval between negative 3 and 3, it's going to be positive. So I'm concave up from negative 3 to 3. And I have to be concave down on the outsides because that's where it's negative. Negative infinity to negative 3 union with negative 3, or excuse me, positive 3. Positive 3 to infinity. Now, once I describe all those properties and all that stuff, then I can go ahead and sketch it. And I'm going to do that in a second. I forgot about asymptotes. So let's talk about asymptotes. Let me just squeeze it in right here. This goes back to way back to our algebra review early in the semester. Um, for my horizontal asymptotes, the, the powers in the numerator and denominator are equal. So therefore, it's going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients, which is negative 2. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals negative 2. And that's what it's going to approach. That's what f of x is going to approach as x goes to infinity or negative infinity. And then our vertical asymptotes are, are undefined values for the denominator. And that happens at x equals plus or minus 3. 
put in your asymptotes, you can put in a point. We know zero zero is on the graph. We know what's increasing, we know where it's decreasing, concave up, concave down. Give yourself a sketch. There you go. There's my beautiful sketch. My vertical asymptote at negative three, positive three, horizontal at negative two, point zero zero is here. We know the graph is decreasing on this interval, increasing here. It's concave up. Okay. Down here, it's decreasing, concave down, um, increasing, concave down. It's going to approach negative 2 as I go to infinity and negative infinity. So again, nothing new in this section. There's nothing um, new applications or any of that. It's just a matter of pulling everything together and looking at some graphs and then maybe also describing some graphs and asking you to sketch them out. Good luck.